Welcome to the third tutorial in the Space Bubbles project. In this tutorial we're going to show you how to create the gamma ray objects so that when you press the enter key the gamma ray objects will be emitted from the player ship and move up the screen at a set speed and will grow in size as they move up the screen. The first thing to do is to come across to our objects group and just uh, open that up and you should just have the object player in there at the moment. Right click on the objects group name and select create object and this is going to be our gamma ray object. Come across to the object properties window obj underscore gamma ray is what we're going to name this object. Again we're using the obj prefix to signify that this is an object element. Press enter and we are then going to assign a sprite to this object and we're going to come down to the player group and select SPR player gamma ray. Okay that will then give us the gamma ray sprite. This object will get created when the player presses the enter key so it will spawn in this object so we want to give it some predefined actions that will make it move up the screen automatically and face the right direction and get bigger as it goes okay so we're going to override some of the built-in variables that come with the object and we're going to do that through the variable definitions window so if you click that open here we can add in new variables for an object um, or we can override existing variables for an object I'll just take a a little bit of time just to explain what a variable is. So a variable is essentially a reserved area of memory where you can store some information while your program or your game is running and they are essential for remembering information during the game. So for example you could think of it as a slot so I've got memory slot 1 over here and inside memory slot 1 I've, I'm storing the value of 150. Now that value could represent anything, it could represent a score, it could represent um, lives, it could represent an angle, it could represent anything. But what's important is it's storing that value for us so that we can use it within our program. You create variables by giving them a name, a data type and an initial value. Uh, what you can see here is a screenshot from GameMaker. I've created four variables. Uh, the one, first one is called warp gate distance and I've given it a default value of 500 and I've set it to an integer data type. Now with variables you need to tell the computer what sort of data will be stored within the variable so that it knows how to handle and treat that variable. I've set this first one to an integer. Integer stores whole numbers only so what you're saying to the computer is I'm only going to be storing whole numbers inside this variable. You could set the data type to a string which allows you to store text. You could set it to a boolean which allows you to store true or false values only or you could set it to a real data type which allows you to store decimal numbers. So you can see in the example here I've got four variables, two of them are integer data types so that's for the warp gate distance and the player score are both whole number values only and then two player game and one game variables are both set up as boolean so they're either true or false variables. You can access the information that they store within a variable by referring to their name. Okay, so here we've got an action block from GameMaker where I'm saying um, assign the variable player underscore score the value or add 50 onto the onto the value of player underscore score. Okay, here I'm also using the variable player score and I'm using it to draw whatever the value is of player score onto the screen. So we're saying this is essentially the currently current player's score and I'm giving it some coordinates to draw that onto the screen. So what's really useful is that you can then use these variables to store and remember information as the game's playing. GameMaker as I said before uh, provides a number of common instance variables for all of the objects that you create so they come with x and y values, direction value, a speed value, image angle value, image alpha value which is the transparency level of the sprite and obviously uh, the sprite itself the value of the sprite that you're going to assign to that object. So what I'm going to do is overwrite these three variables here direction, speed and image angle. I'm going to overwrite them for the gamma ray object okay so I'm going to give them a default value and I'm going to do that through the variables definitions window. So back to game maker and the variable definitions window I'm going to click add and I'm going to type in speed, press enter 
and I'm going to set that value to 5. So what I'm saying is the gamma ray object, when it's created, is going to move at the speed of 5. I'm going to change this to an integer data type because it's essentially a whole number only. I'm going to click Add again, and this time I'm going to set the direction variable. And what you'll notice is as you're typing the value in, if it's recognizing the variable name that you've typed in, it will then start popping up and um, potential values for it. So here it's listing me a number of different things that GameMaker think I'm, thinks I might be referring to. So as you can see, it's already picked out the direction is a, is a variable already in the object and it's saying, do you want this one? If you want that, you just click on it and it will um, also complete the text for you. So I'm going to set the direction to 90 because I want the to want um, the object to move up the screen. So referring back to angles in GameMaker, 0 degrees is pointing to the right, 90 degrees is pointing up, 180 degrees is pointing to the left and 270 degrees points down in GameMaker. So I'm going to set the image angle or oh, sorry the direction to 90 because I want the object to move up the screen. So set this value to 90 and set its data type to integer again a whole number. Let's add a third variable now, image underscore, and again, I'm not going to finish the word because GameMaker is trying to auto-complete it for me. There's image angle. I'm going to click on that and select that. And I'm also going to set that to 90 because what you'll see is our graphic as well, by default, is pointing to the right. So I'm going to rotate that graphic and point it up the screen so at angle 90. So all of these variables already exist in the object. I'm just literally overwriting their default value in this window. Don't forget to set this one to ninth, uh, integer as well. Time to add our first event for this object now. So come up to the add event button and select that. And we're going to add a step event. So select step and then step. The step event is an event that will run 60 times a second in the game. So it runs basically all of the time the game is running. Okay, It runs at 60 times a second because our game is set to run at 60 frames a second. Okay, So by putting a value or an action in this event we can run it multiple times as the game is running. Double click on the step action editor and then we'll then refocus it on the screen for us. We're looking to add a transform sprite action or the scale action so I'm going to say sprite it's actually the scale action and what we're looking for it bring up all the sprite action blocks and the one we're looking for is set instant scale so I'm going to drag that across and what I'm going to say is I'm going to set the vertical scale of the object to increase by 0.02 every step so I'm going to tick relative because that will mean add on. Don't set it to 0 0.02, add 0 0.02 onto the current value. So the set instant scale is going to essentially make the sprite grow vertically by 0 0.02 every step. So that's every six, 60 times a second it's going to grow by that value. Okay. Now I've set the vertical axis to scale, not the horizontal, because if you have a look at the sprite over here, I want it to stretch out vertically. I don't want it to stretch horizontally, okay? Because of the way the graphic has been designed, it points to the right. So I want to set on the vert uh, scale on the vertical axis, okay? Come back here. We're going to leave the horizontal axis just at one, which means it would be at its default value and won't change, okay? Close that event down. The final event we want to add is in the other category, and it's outside room so it's the outside room event so this event will trigger when the object instance goes outside of the current room that you're playing within okay now this is a really useful event because when an object goes or object instance goes outside of a room we want to essentially get rid of it because if we don't get rid of it it will stay in the game even though we can't see it it will carry on doing what we've programmed it to do and it will essentially be taking up memory that we don't need to be taking up because it's not on the screen we can't see it anymore so when it goes outside the room we essentially want to remove it from the game okay so double click on the actions box to refocus it and we want to use the destroy action for that so if you type start typing it in it will then pop it up destroy instant action 
Okay, and what this will do is, essentially as it goes outside the room, it will just immediately destroy the object and free up the memory that was being used for it. Okay, if we don't do that, then all of these gamma ray objects will essentially stay within the game world, taking up more and more memory as we play the game. Close that action down. Let's add some of these objects to the room now to test out their behavior. So come across to your room, double click on it, and then click and drag in some instances of the gamma ray object. Put it in different places in the room. You can grab in as many as you want. Okay, once you've grabbed in um, and placed in those instances, hit the play button. And what you should see is these, there you go, the gamma ray objects, they're all moving, they've all moving up the screen. Um, their graphic has been rotated, their sprite has been rotated, and they're getting bigger as they move up the screen. So their behavior is correct. So I'm just going to delete these out now. So just select them, delete them out of the room again. So you just click on them and press the delete key, which is above the arrow keys on the keyboard. Okay, and once you've done that, close down the room. So what we want to do now is we want to create these gamma ray objects when the player presses the enter key. So we're going to close down the gamma ray object, come across to the object player, double click on it and open up its properties. And we're going to add in a new event. So add event, key pressed this time, not the key down, key pressed and we're going to look for the enter key. There it is. So when the enter key is pressed, what we're going to do is create an instance of the gamma ray object. So I'm going to start typing creating. It will then show you the create instance action block, drag that in. Okay, on this action block, we're then going to select which object we're going to create an instance of. So on the, on the drop down button, select that and select object gamma ray okay and we're going to tick relative for both x and y coordinates what this means is we are going to create this instance at position 0 0 of where the player object currently is in the game room if we didn't have these ticked it would create them at position 0 0 within the room so what that means is your room coordinates the way it works is 0 0 is in the top left of the room our room is 800 pixels wide, so X is 800 on the right hand side of the room and Y is 960 at the bottom of the room because remember positive values of Y go down. Okay, We can also have coordinates um, that go off the screen, so uh, minus values of X will go off to the left hand side of the screen and minus values of Y will go off the top of the screen. Okay, So what we're saying is here we're not going to um, create it at zero, 00 in the room coordinates. We're going to create it zero, 00 at the current object uh, player position. Okay. Close that event down and hit the play button. So now when the player hits the enter key, it should uh, create the gamma ray object at the player's position. And then when we create the object, the object will then take over and move itself up the screen at the right angle and grow in size as it moves up the screen. So well done. You have now created the gamma objects, gamma ray objects.